ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie talk podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz, and on this week's episode, we'll be talking about the movie The Fall Guy. But of course, before I get to any of that, I'm joined today by Unicorn Nathaniel, Nathaniel Gingrich. What up, folks? I'm Unicorn Nathaniel. If you see me, you've got problems. That's it. What kind of problems? Good problems, actually. Because you're having a like, good time. You're seeing unicorns. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What if? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think in most situations that'd be a good thing. But I could be, think of a few bad I'm ones. I'm like, I'm like the boogeyman of good luck. Like I'm, I, I scare you, but then you know something really good happens. Okay. So like. Okay. Tales of the Crypt. Yeah. <laughs> like you're walking down the street and like I pop out behind you like boo, and then like you trip over, but then you'll find twenty bucks on the ground. Like, <laughs> like you break your leg, but like. <laughs> You stumbled on a bag of cash. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or like the insurance payout, like, you yeah. know, takes right. care of you. You get to sue Chase Bank or something. I don't know. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm the Baba Duck of good luck. <laughs> the the Baba good luck? I got good? it. Yeah, something there's something there. We'll figure it out. The later. Baba Guck. You're the Baba good? L- Baba good. Baba uh Baba Luck. Baba Luck. Baba Luck. <laughs> <laughs> It took me a second we to tried. get that all out, but yeah. I kept <laughs> wanting to say I kept wanting to say G because he just right? said Guck. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> "Anyways, that's me and the unicorns." Also joining us today is stuntman Ty Tyler Bradells. That'd be a pretty. That'd be I, honestly, I think it'd be a fun job. Oh yeah, so being I mean, a stuntman. Yeah, I don't know if it's one I'd want. I mean, it could be fun every once in a while, but. I, I did like work I to get for hurt. Uh, a really uh, famous stuntman. I don't know what his name is. I got, I, I hung some TVs in his house because Justin was working on the set of one of the oh. Chicago PD yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. things at the time when he was doing school stuff. And uh, he met him that way. And Justin's like, I can mount TVs. He can't. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so he asked me and I was like, what are you doing to me, dude? And so yeah, I was like, sure. whatever. <laughs> so I went over there with him, and we mounted like three TVs for this guy. That's fun. Paid me cash. I was cool with it. Uh, not bad. Yeah. Work. Yeah. I'll say it now because I don't work for Best, Best Buy, Buy anymore. Well, yeah. I, it's, I did it while I worked for Best Buy. Yeah. She had um, a yeah. beat. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was just like one of those things I didn't, you know, I didn't talk about. What do I, I don't give a shit. But I told him what we would charge for this because one of them was on tile. And oh. oh, that's bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and so I was like, he was like, what would uh, what would what would Best Buy charge for this? I was like, you're probably looking at like eight hundred dollars of work here, bud. Yeah. And he's like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's fucking insane. I was like, I know. <laughs> so I'm here. <laughs> and but I was you know I was nice about it, and I really didn't expect cash. But this dude ended up handing me like five five hundred bucks cash. There you go. So. There we go. Yeah, pays to be a stuntman. Yeah, but yeah, but overall story, he was a he was a stuntman, and I don't remember his name or you know anything like that. Johnny Law. That's not keeping any paper trails. Smart guy. That's smart, the guy. Smart move, Nathan or Tyler. What's up? <laughs> What's Ghost I said No name? paper trails. Oh, uh, Johnny Johnny Cage? No. Johnny something. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. Yeah, yeah, it was, it it was like Johnny, Johnny Cage. It was Johnny, 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 Johnny. Yeah, no, it was Johnny Blaze. <laughs> Johnny Blaze. Yeah, yeah, it was Johnny Blaze. <laughs> Rounding out the squadron, of course, is Big Boat Blake. Blake Holder. Hey, what up? What up? Stump boat. Right in the boat. Uh, what, okay. When's the last time I've been on a boat? I don't go on boats often. I was, I was, I was on a boat when I went to Jamaica. That was J- oh. uh, November with my family. So it was. Okay. Uh, what is Pretty it like? Plant, pontoon, 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 pontoon. Thank you. I figured somebody would be able to help me out. I say it was one of those. So I mean, eh, I don't think I've been on a real big. Well, I guess I've been on a cruise ship, and that's effectively a boat. So 
Yeah. I'm good with it, though, man. It takes me a little bit to get adjusted on the small boats, right, on the pontoon. It takes a little bit mm-hmm. to get the sway of the water. But, um, the sea legs? I'm not somebody who's, like, the motion sickness, nauseous. I'm I'm cool. I can get up and walk and do what I got to do. Right. Um, there's obviously people you see in there, and they're like, yeah, like, I'm not getting up this entire <laughs> and I'm not one of those people, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay on boats. I love boats. You have to have a license to drive a boat, right? Um, you actually don't I think need technically. one. Technically. Oh. Yeah. So and you can just get behind that shit and drive it. In the state of Illinois, you don't need to go like an extra class. As long as you, as long as you have your driver's license, they're like, look at the hang of it. <laughs> Close enough to a car. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they they know that obviously most people that get involved in boating probably knows somebody that has a right. boat, and that's why. Yeah, you learn. And, yeah, and so like, I, I, I've been, dude, I've been driving boats since I was like. 12 I was gonna say, old. if anyone here is <laughs> driven a boat, I was I was gonna bet you. Yeah, With I've been Daniel, driving. Adam. Well, he's got a lake house. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so I I like that was like the thing you did as a kid. Yeah, grandpa. Yeah. Grandpa sat in the chair, and then you stood up, and you get to you get to drive, and grandpa tells you go left, go right, and you get to use the throttle, and so parking parking's another level. Parking's right, like yeah. when you actually get to like driving cars because parking's a lot different. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, you, they they put you behind a boat like real quick when you're on lakes. Yeah, so yeah, we'll we'll see. Like Jet you skis. Can, like you right. can go rent a boat. Right. Like if you're at an Airbnb and they have a boat, like you can. You, there's a good chance you, you can, can use it. Boat. Yeah. Oh. That is your ah. boat legally. Okay. Now, <laughs> you may be onto something. I think we may go to to DC. Shout out Adam, his old stomping hey. ground. <laughs> may go there for Memorial yeah. Day weekend uh, with some buddies. So yeah, we'll see. Obviously. You're on. You're along the water there as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Close there's, there's kind of water yeah. everywhere. Even if it's a lake, yeah. or, you know, a pond. Yeah, or yeah. You'll find something. So, yeah. There's a there's a river. You could sure go kayaking though. They got a lot of kayaking spots. I did that. That was fun. Okay. Um, so you can go kayak on the the um, Potomac, um, and then you have kind of you're the very close yeah potomac is the river that runs through dc and then you're very close to that connects to chesapeake bay basically um i think that's technically a part of chesapeake bay i know it's very close um if not a part of it but um yeah dc is fun man dc is a good time you ever been out there no no this will actually be my first time to dc so are you guys are you doing the whole sightseeing tours or or seeing all the sites or are you just kind of what are you guys doing out there we'll we'll figure it out so right now we're we're trying to lock up flights in airbnb it'll it'll probably yeah. happen so it'll be me three friends from here one of my friends from college who lives in phoenix yeah um and then one of my friends from here jt who you met um at best buy his yeah. dad lives out there in dc so oh, okay yeah, so even his dad will have to be able to give us City tips. Or like Arlington Ooh, or like Virginia? I can tell you. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's Arlington. Sure. I don't know if it's Alexandria, Virginia. I don't know. If it's, you know what I mean? Couldn't tell you. I mean, it's all about He'll be able to give us tips. There are, yeah. there are train lines that go out there. So yep. uh, yeah, I'm sure he, he knows. The, the metro system out there is awesome. So make yeah. sure you utilize that if you're getting around the city. Mm-hmm. Because I think too hard just to, one step north of that is, I think it's what, Baltimore, then Philly, then New York? Philly. Right. We went to Philly. Yeah, I, I, yeah. when my DC, family visited Baltimore, Baltimore, Philly, Philly yeah. and it's I think I remember it being like a two, two and a half hour drive. Sure. Baltimore about an hour and a half drive, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, what was the other one you said? Uh, I think New York is the one north of Philly, right? So I think it's DC. New York's three hour like drive, three and a half, if I remember. Okay. Three, three and yeah. a half, if I remember correctly. They're all relatively close. Like you can get yeah, to man. all of them pretty quick yeah. from DC. Um, I just didn't have a car out there, so I wasn't able to do too much of that. But yeah, so yeah, yeah we'll see, man. Should be good. But yeah, but now that you mentioned that, hopefully, maybe we'll try to get on the water out there. See, see what's going it's, on. I mean, when are you going? Uh, Memorial Day weekend seems to be the the plan. So I'll probably be out there okay. Friday through Tuesday or something. So, gotcha. We'll, we'll still be able to uh, record on Wednesday. Oh, hey, there yeah. you go. There yes, you go. sir. Maybe on Old Wana. Hey, man. No, I'm kidding. Hey. I'll be here. That's really rude. Let's do the, uh, let's do, uh, actually, you know what? I was gonna say, what are we gonna do for Memorial Day or 4th of July? But then I was gonna make up like a really shitty joke and like, let's do which one of those purges <laughs> occur on the 4th of July. Oh, there's, like, let's do yeah. that film. There's a couple of them that have to do with sucks. all that kind of stuff. Uh, isn't it, are they yeah. all 4th of July? Wait, is that, <laughs> is the purge on 4th of July? This is, I think so. 
Yeah. Honestly, no, America. It is. There is one that there is one that is like an election year or something. Yeah, like yeah there Maybe is. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. I think it's, it's called, called the election. purge election year, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was a joke though. Please do not put purge election year. Do it. I, I'll, I'll 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 put it on the short list. We'll see if we do can get around it. to it. Um, all right, fellas. Well, I think we should. We got plenty of post bot talking. Uh, we do. Curious of our thoughts on Kendrick Drake beef. Um, if you want to hear those, that we, we got about thirty minutes of that uh, <laughs> after the show today. Too much. So go ahead, stick around. Uh, That'll be the kind that. of stuff that's on a Patreon someday if we have one. That's true. Correct. Correct. Uh, but we're going to go ahead instead and talk about the movie The Fall Guy. Uh, Nathaniel, if the listener here is new or maybe they've just forgotten, can you give them a rundown of how the review segment works? What up, folks? If you're new or maybe you've just forgotten, uh, the way the rundown re- seg- Ooh, the way the rundown works, the way the review segment works here on Pack Row Banter is it is split into two sections. There's the non-spoiler section, and then there's the spoiler section. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, in the non-spoiler section, we'll go over the movie itself, who wrote it, who directed, who's in it. Uh, you know, go kind of through its IMDb page, talk about it a little bit. We'll go around and decide if we recommend the movie. It has to be a yes or no. There is no nuance on the internet. And then uh, it'll be spoiler time if you don't have anything spoiled for you. Go ahead and check out, but check back in when we get to the end of our review, where we rank it up on our entry P list, which is our big list of everything we've watched on the podcast ranked. And yeah, Adam, tell me about The Fall Guy. I would love to. This is a new movie, of course, rated PG-13 with a runtime of two hours and six minutes and an IMDb rating of 7.3 out of 10. Uh, It is directed by David Leach, who is a former uh, stunt director, stunt man, stunt coordinator, whatever you want to call him. Uh, Is this his first? I think this is his first directing credit. Am I wrong, Nathaniel? Do you know? Is this... Oh, I take that back. He yeah, he's been directing a oh, bunch of shit. Bullet <laughs> train, bullet train, no. And Deadpool. Okay, 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 okay. That's where I've heard the name from. Um, the writing or this movie is written by Drew Pierce and is based on a television series that was created by Glenn A. Larson. Uh, the cast includes Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, Hannah Waddingham. Uh, Teresa Palmer. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find. We'll go Stephanie Sue and Winston Duke. I think I'll leave it there. Am I missing any other big names? Don't I don't think so. No. Cool. We're gonna leave it there. Uh, the IMDb summary reads as follows: A down and out stuntman must find the missing star of his ex girlfriend's blockbuster film. Short and sweet. I like it. Um, it is one of those movies where you don't need much more context. It's a short and simple pre- premise, and it is a fun and good time. Uh, I enjoyed myself with this one, fellas. How are you guys feeling? Uh, yeah, I'll take a stab at it first. It was. It was cool. I liked it. It, it, it was pretty much the film I thought it was going to be, right? Um, went in with kind of, I don't want to say a cookie cutter molding, but for the most part, yeah. And this is, it's effectively what I received there sitting in, uh, sitting in the theater chair. So yeah. Overall, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll deep dive, but yeah, I don't, I don't have too many pre-spoiler thoughts. It's the movie I thought it was going to be. There are some jokes. There's some action. There's some romance. Um, yeah. Overall, I do like Ryan Gosling a lot, though. Arguably, yeah, my favorite Ryan. Arguably, who are the mm-hmm. who are the other top contenders? Uh, Ryan uh, Ryan Reynolds is Ryan probably Reynolds up there. Is up there. Yeah, who else is he competing um, with? Oh, what's the? I feel like there was a BMX guy I keep thinking of, and his name is Ryan something. Ryan Sheckler, the skateboarder. Is it, maybe I'm thinking of skateboarding. <laughs> I I don't know. Ryan Seacrest. You may have Ryan Seacrest. Is he a BMX rider? No, he's the host no. of American Idol. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, he'd be number three on that list for sure between those three Ryans. So yeah, nonetheless, maybe maybe the best Ryan out. So yeah, we'll uh, I'll provide some thoughts uh, once we get to spoilers. But yeah, overall, like I said, like the movie, good runtime, good jokes. I love Ryan Gosling. Um, the director is very similar to like a Bullet Train esque type of film, which I I thought it was gonna be right. So I was like, you know what, I'm cool with it. Um, I don't necessarily know if I like it more than Bullet Train per se, um, but yeah, overall I'm I'm in on it. I would recommend this to anybody. This is a summer blockbuster film. 
Yeah, I think I'm in a, <clears throat> in a similar boat. I um, I think this this movie actually really reminds me of kind of that mid tier action comedy that doesn't really get made anymore. That was kind of like a feature of the late '80s, early '90s, like a almost like a Rush Hour or something like sure. that, you know. But like a more romantic, obviously Rush yeah. Hour kind of thing overall, uh, where it like takes place in that world that's like a little bit more heightened than like reality it's a little bit more silly and a little bit more yeah. camp kind of thing 100 percent. uh but yeah I th- it kind of felt like a, a little bit of a throwback uh for me in that way so i i came out enjoying myself i don't think it's a movie that's reinventing the wheel or even you know particularly pushing a, a genre forward beyond just kind of being the celebration of stunts and stunts in movie making um but you know that's that's cool too it's it's like blake said it's a it's a definition of a summer popcorn movie. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. I think uh, as long as you're done. I am. Yeah. For that okay. one, for sure. Yeah. Cool, I, cool, I, cool. I recommend. Cool. Yeah. I would say that uh, I'm on a very similar boat. I think my only caveat to recommending this is that this is this like for me falls under one category and it's like full blown date movie. Day movie, sure. day yeah, movie, yeah. day movie. You save it for that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I think this movie might be a little hard to enjoy by yourself at the theaters. It's a pretty easy watch by yourself, like when you're at home. But it, I'd say it's pretty pretty hard pressed to like be like, hey man, if you got nothing to do by let's, yourself, let's get the boys. You should check this movie out. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I I saw it with Leah. Uh, this has been the first movie in quite some time where one we've had time and um, two I'm like I know she's full in on this rom com kind of um humor cute you yeah. know funny kind of setting and ryan gosling emily blunt like just everyone loves both of them yeah like yep. yeah yeah yep. just so much cute on the on the screen you can't even handle it and um and yeah i think uh i think they did a really good job to it but yeah i'm gonna recommend for sure like i said i put this in the the genre of date movie uh go see this with a brand new date Do, bring back movie dates Hell Don't yeah. be ashamed to go to movies for dates. Movie dates are dope. Um, yep. And uh, sure know, also. yeah, or if you have you know a wife or girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, fiance, wherever you're at in your journey, a partner, yeah, partner, um, a submissive, a dominant, whatever you are, right. um, go see this movie with your person. It's cute as fuck. There you go, Adam. I'm on the same t- train as all you guys. Nothing, sure. nothing too crazy here, but Copycat. definitely a really good. Yeah, I I started off by saying <laughs> I'm so actually you guys copied me. Uh, as as someone went to who went to see this with his father, how do you rate it as a date movie? <laughs> uh, no comments. Um, Come on, <laughs> dad and son uh, bonding time. You were also there. I know. <laughs> that's, like, that's what makes this. That's what makes this joke even funnier. Is that not only that, there was five other of us there too. Yeah, that yeah, great context. Thanks. Um, no, it, it was a, it was it was a good time. I I agree with Tyler's point to the like you don't want to see this alone. Not necessarily as a date movie, but like it's a it's a movie you want to laugh at. Like it's like it's yeah, a comedy at the end movie. of the day. Like yeah, good crowd movie for sure. So it, it definitely had some good laughs in there more than I was honestly expecting. Um, Ryan Gosling it, it might it might be my favorite Ryan. Period. Like I after you know I've I've already been a huge fan of his, but like after this one, I was sitting down and there was something about his performance where I was like, he's just the best. Like after seeing Barbie last year and now you seeing crushed, him as dude. as, as Colt Seavers, dude, like crush. he's yeah. he, I might I might have I, a Ryan Gosling. I have crush. one too. I I yeah, think it's a problem I, I no if you don't. For sure. For <laughs> yeah. sure. Between, like you said, this Barbie, the nice guys, he's awesome. In that, yeah. Which we may have to put on the short list as well. But yeah, he's that's a good one. That's some good work. How old is Ryan Gosling? Anybody know? Uh, no Google. Be early 40s. Shoot your guesses right now. What are we going? All right, I'm gonna Ty? go. Uh, uh, ooh, maybe uh, maybe uh, he is late 30s. 39. No, he's 39. Okay, he's Adam. Like 41. Yeah, I was I was ballparking like a 43 ish, 42, 43. I'll go forty. I'll go forty-three. Nathaniel also says forty-one organically. He's not here, so. <laughs> okay. Do you want he him to born... pick another number? <laughs> I ha- I have the answer. Here. Are we waiting? Just do it. Drum no, we got we got forty-one, thirty-nine, forty-three. 
he is indeed 43 years old. Dang. Born in uh, November 12th, uh, 1980. We'll take it. He's he's Canadian too. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know he was I born that in Ryan London, Canada. Canada. Hmm. Thanks, bro. 43. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So shout yeah. out the Canadians. Shout them out. Uh, not Drake though. Not Drake. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Everyone but him. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> anyway, this movie's this movie's fun. I think you should definitely go see it. And if you can go see it in theaters, I've seen that the box office numbers are not as high as they probably should be on this one. Yeah, um, and I would definitely well. love another one of these. And more than anything, I'd love to support David Leach because he's made some good stuff. And I'd love yeah. to support these types of like just new movies, newish movies. I know it's a rebooted IP, but like it's not a sequel yeah. or or anything like that or or a reboot. Like I don't know. So do we, do yeah. we ultimately know why this thing failed in the box office? Because yeah, that is some stuff I've been seeing on Reddit as well. But it doesn't. I couldn't really get any valid information. I, I I don't I I don't have a great answer for you other than like it's not a movie that's gonna catch people's attention yeah. in the way that like a Dune does you know that like, gets talked about really yeah. you know I don't know the budget on this so like I saw it made about a hundred and fifty million ish uh, over the Opening weekend, weekend. Yeah. which like isn't great considering this budget was probably closer to the fifty million to like a hundred I don't know I I have no yeah range to know yeah. how much I'm, this is made for so i gotcha yeah i'm not entirely sure why either the only thing i would say and you got to take kind of my opinion with the grain of salt i'm not a big uh trailer teaser guy but i did not see a ton of promo for this right so i think ultimately it may be something that kind of just like popped up in release weekend sure. and maybe you are already out with the partner trying to find something to do like oh, let's go see a movie then you kind of walk that way but i don't think it was something that was really like hey oh Fall Guy comes out, what is that, May May 4th, or whatever it mm -hmm. may be, right? So, yeah, interesting. Because I feel like Bullet Train did pretty good in the box office, no? I think uh, so. It did, because that was yeah. kind of a viral, it was kind of one of those viral ones that got people's attention and got yeah. some buzz on yeah. social media. Um, Deadpool's obviously done well as well. So, I... Yeah. It, it needs to make 200 million to to make a profit. It had a budget of about 130 million. It only made 30 to 40 million are the I think estimates for how much it made on its opening weekend. Oh, from what I'm seeing, so really under budget. Do you struggle, boss? Genuine question: yeah. Do you guys do you guys think the the social media sphere having so much attention on Kendrick and Drake took Ooh. away from the fact that people aren't talking about movies? No. No, I think you're always going to find your separate groups. I think obviously yeah. like you will get some crossover, but I don't re I don't remember seeing anything for this movie either, which is kind of a shame given where we're at in social media times. Like it's so easy to run something for like a TikTok ad or a fucking YouTube ad or something like that. Like it's so easy to just pop that short tiny little content in something now especially for everybody's brain, well, that you that think was, there'd be something. That was what actually what a lot of people were saying was that like some of the trailers felt like they were edited for TikTok at, like already and that people mm. just kind of had it with like, oh, it might be fun, but I'll wait for it on streaming kind of thing, uh. attitude, and they think it might be kind of a victim of that. But That's a shit attitude. If you had that, if you had that mentality, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, it's... it's it seems fun, or it was fun. It felt fun. I thought it was going to have more of an audience than it did, um, but I, you know, I would like to hope that you know maybe good word of mouth gets behind it and yeah. we keep going here. I'm kidding, by the way. I don't mean to you know be so rude sometimes. It's no, just I, you know I get passionate about I, people going to the movies. Go to the movies. Yeah. Please. Um, all right. Well, recommend all around. It seems like yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I recommend. All right. Go see Fall Guy, and if you don't have a crush on Ryan Gosling, I I don't know what to tell you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and head into spoilers here. So if you've not seen the movie and do not want to spoil it for you, go ahead check the episode description where I've left a timestamp you can jump to, where you'll be taken to the ranking of our of the movie up upon our entropy list. Uh, spoiler time, Nathaniel. What do you got for us this week? An applause for our boy. Ryan Gosling, Kendrick Stark Lamar. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> What's his name in this? Colt Seavers. Colt Seavers. Colt Seavers. Colt Seavers and 
and Tom Ryder. And Jody something. Moreno. Jody Moreno? Is that her last name? Some good character names here. And then you got Gail Meyer. Yeah, Gail Meyer's pretty funny. And then what what was our boy, Winston? He was great. Big Dan. Uh, Dan something. Dan Tucker. Dan Tucker. Dan Tucker. Yeah. Dan Tucker sounds like the best friend in a movie. That's just a that's a solid yes. number two yeah. bro yeah. name. That's like that's yeah, my boy, it's, Dan it's, Tucker. Oh yeah, for sure, man. As far as names go of actual characters in movies, yeah, Colt Seavers is right now immediately in my head second. Only two oh. Chev, only two Chev Chelios. <laughs> okay. Chev Chelios, Chev Chelios is the all time <laughs> best character name in any movie. Chev Chelios. Shut what about John Wick? It. John Wick's got to be. Up there. Oh yeah, that's that's in the John top Wick top five. five? Sure. Okay, that's at in the least top John five, Wick is top five. Maximus. We Marcus should do that as an episode. <laughs> we should do that one day. Best character names. Yeah, that'd be fun. Jackie Treehorn. Anyway, we got spoilers here, fellas. Uh, Joe Dirt. <laughs> Treats oh yeah, that's yeah, that's up there for sure. <laughs> Treats his objects like women, man. <laughs> Anyways, spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Shit goes down. Shit goes down. Yeah, kind kinda. This is a had more of a wild goose chase kind of like silly plot than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be a mm. little bit more serious than it ended up being. I don't know why I thought that, but pretty silly movie at the end of the day. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that's like that is what I was talking about when I was like it kind of like weirdly made me remember this this kind of weird niche 90s 80s 90s movie that i feel like did kind of take place in those a little bit sillier realities in some ways and that like i wonder if that's a, a thing of like if that's just a symptom of like the way that movies moved for a bit where like the advent of digital just made everything more realistic and then you had like the the born movies which made things you know close up action much more like Grit, gritty, realistic, like this is what spies yeah. really have, and that kind of thing. And now we're kind of coming out the other side of it. And like, I think I did. I send that meme to the group where it was like, "We're in movies. We we heighten reality in this bitch or whatever." <laughs> like the like Maybe Kevin yeah. Hart <laughs> thing. <laughs> but like, that's that's my that's my my motto recently is that like yeah. mov- movies are there to be entertaining and, and and heighten reality. Let's you know commit to the bit, folks. Yeah. All right. And and for for listeners, right? This is uh, watching spoilers. Or you're now listening to spoilers. I assume yep. you've watched it. But yeah, ultimately, it's about so Ryan Gosling or Colt. Was it Colt Seavers? Colt Seavers is Seavers. a stunt man, right? Yep. And ironically enough, I don't. I was kind of reading some things. Ironically enough, I don't even think he's doing his own stunts in this, which is just very funny too. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, kind of doubling down in it. Yeah. So it's just. The whole movie is 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 just funny. It's, it's got multiple layers to it of comedy to it. But he ultimately, yeah, he's a, he's a stunt man, and we were kind of just introduced to him. Um, and yeah, it's I don't know, man. This is the film I thought it would be. To right. be honest with you, I guess I didn't know he would be a stunt man by the name of the title. Like I went in relatively blind. Sure, oh, okay. right. So like that that was new information to me. But yeah, ultimately, this is the film turned out ultimately exactly. What so then, were you kind of anybody like- surprised by this? Uh, I mean, I'd seen the commercials, so I would. I kind of knew okay. what I was. Yeah, in for. I think I caught the. I probably. I, f- I would assume most of us, if we were early enough, not that anybody rushes to go see Nicole Kidman, but like this played. Yeah, a other, couple different times. Yeah, so I've seen this trailer a couple times, just yeah. you know, through osmosis of watching other movies at the theater. So I actually go to AMC to see Nicole Kidman, and the movie's just kind of no, a bonus. Don't. No, you don't. Nobody yeah. does. Well, I'm not. So bring this fu- to bring this full circle. When we went to see Bullet Train and AMC has the Nicole Kidman kind of prelude type thing that goes on, that is where we we did see my man who stood up, <laughs> took his hat off, and put his hand over his heart like it was the Pledge of Allegiance or like it was yeah. the National Anthem. Bullet Train? I said Pledge of Allegiance like we were fucking six. The National Anthem. Um, the guy well, stood no, Pledge up. Pledge of Allegiance, too. But was that Bullet Train? I, I could have sworn. It, was. it had sure to be Bullet Train, bro. Did we? I, don't okay. I think so. I think so. it might have been. It might have been. Yeah. Side note, Pledge of Allegiance. When's the last time you've heard the Pledge of Allegiance? Weird, right? Weird when you think about it now. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know why I said it because I was a little kid. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very, it feels it's like, a, oh, we're kind of trying to It's straight up a prayer. They say amen at yeah. the end of it. Like, like why, is it, why is it not just the national anthem? <laughs> yeah, why the hell did we ever do that? Fucking wild. Yeah. Times were different. You think they still do that in school? 
I don't think he can. I, I, do. I think so. I think that there are probably some like super crazy, yeah, 100%. private schools that yeah. you know some parents still send their kids to, and they're mm-hmm. still probably around like that seven, eight, nine. Sure. You know, still pretty early on. Maybe even like a Catholic school. Yeah. Um, would probably I, I don't I, those are the people that I would assume that are still doing that. Right. Yeah. So we don't think that's in public schools anymore. Not, not, no, not Ooh. unless you're like in, in like the deep south or Boofle. somewhere where sure. it's like a, a real Republican area, like yeah. real, real heavy. Yeah. Republican. A one room schoolhouse. Yeah. Like you move there knowing that it's only Republicans. Interesting. I'll investigate um, through my job and see if I can. There you go. You should. Yeah. I don't know why we got a man on time. the inside. I, if I I, I kind of remember there being like pauses for the pre- pledge of allegiance still, but mm-hmm. like no one actually does it. Would you like stand up and decide it right now for your job? From like if I had like to keep my yeah. job, I don't no. even know if I could <laughs> recite it. Oh, I got that unlocked. Like, so that what gonna, I was it, it was more so a joke. Like if pilot. the pledge of allegiance actually yeah. occurred, like would you recite it out loud at your job, <laughs> or would you just like stand for it, like everybody else would be quiet, oh. or would you actually? Oh, I've never, I haven't said it since I was like forced to in a like elementary school. <laughs> For sure. Ever since it became <laughs> yeah. optional, I was like, I'm not getting up. That's fine. I don't even, I, I genuinely don't know if I can recite it all. I don't really want to try. I remember the beginning. I pledge allegiance well, yeah, to the flag, to the the United, flag States of America. United States of America. <laughs> I don't know where it goes from there, though. <laughs> to the Republic for which it stands. For which it oh, stands. Yeah, yeah. One nation under God. Under God. Indivisible, indivisible, with indivisible with liberty and justice for all. For all. Amen. Look at that. <laughs> Look at I don't that. remember the amen part. I swear to God, the amen was there. I feel yeah, like... I think Nathaniel might have thrown that in there. I don't know if there was an amen. <laughs> amen. amen part. <laughs> but you could, be, you could be right. It sounded, it sounded right when you were talking about it, but when we said it afterwards, it, so, it felt wrong. <laughs> it did feel wrong. But under, under, under God is for sure part of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Wild. Dude, our money says in God we trust. Like, it's, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, yeah. That's funny. All anyway, right. well, this uh, movie, guy. yeah. So this movie for me felt, um, kind of felt like a like an old Hollywood movie. Yeah, I and think I think so. that's because mm. you really kind of got to see a little bit more. And like, it's one of those movies. It also kind of gave me a little throwback to, uh, like Tropic Thunder S. Yep. I'm a dude disguised as a dude playing another dude, yep. and so like, it there's people that are outrageously famous that are playing regular people, um, and it's and it's in a part of the movie world that you don't typically get to see, um. And uh, yeah, it kind of gave me like an old Western vibe, old Hollywood vibe. The Western thing's probably just because of the the costumes, but it was yeah, funny. and they're filming Australia. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, kind of kind of old Hollywood vibe. And what's a movie um, about movies? Yeah, I like I the I like the the romance about it. Their chemistry is obviously uh, really great, and I think those are two actors that thoroughly enjoy being in those roles. And yeah, dude, it was fun. It was an absolute blast. <laughs> I was. I was uh, really l- losing it when he sneaks back in in the costume. In the costume, yeah. and she just beats Beating the, the shit, shit out of him. Out of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes on wait, for wait, so wait, much wait, wait, longer. I was about to say it goes so it goes on for a while. <laughs> like, yeah, she's like strangling him and shit. <laughs> yeah, the cord breaks. Yeah. She's pulling so tight the cord breaks. Yeah, um, I thought that was that was pretty good. Apparently, the guy that plays his henchman. Is a stand-up comedian in in Australia, the big redheaded guy, um, which mm. good for him. Yeah, I thought he looked like a, a straight-up goon. So, like, yeah. um, but yeah, I thought that that was there's a couple of pretty pretty funny set pieces in here, and um, Aaron Taylor Johnson I don't think has the same accent at any given point. During the no, I, I don't care. Scene. He's too charismatic. No, I think he's just doing it. it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably. He's great in this, by the way. And also, I you know knew of the movie and like the gist of it going in, but didn't know he was in it until and Winston Duke didn't know either of them were in it until I sat down and the credits started going mm. um, at the at the very beginning, uh, and then I saw their names and I was like, oh, I am gonna have a great time i guarantee it because i love both those both those guys and uh hannah waddingham from uh ted lasso uh 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 uh, uh, ted lasso thank you 
Uh, yeah, no, Nathaniel said it, but he said it in a in a. a oh, I, he kind of cut out. He kind of cut oh, out. Oh, okay, me, so okay, yeah. He way. said I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he said something weird. Um, but yes, for from Ted Lasso, she's great in this too, and the fact that like she was the one to kind of pull in the strings behind it is a funny kind of reveal. Um, yeah, good, uh, good ones there. But the woman yeah. free basing a diet coke. <laughs> <laughs> and also i love the fact that the gun she has is like a 357 it's magnum huge, yeah. it's huge i'm just like she pulls it out the first time i'm like oh my god and then he's like just obsessively I, large i love that aaron taylor johnson plays the the dumbass dude he's like he like is set on killing him earlier in the film and then like at the end he's like he's the best stunt man i ever yeah, had yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I love the part uh where they're on the dock <laughs> and uh and gosling kind of loses it and he was like because we're on a pier like a fucking bond villain you do <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh my what like, went wrong <laughs> what went right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that whole my favorite line. I think that cop the biggest laugh for me in the first one was, "You need carbs. Your brain <laughs> runs on glucose." <laughs> yeah, a lot of good one-liners for sure. Um, I I actually thoroughly enjoyed the the part where uh, she's telling the story and they're obviously having a full-blown conversation oh, yeah. on set and as he's getting yeah, blown up and he, they, she finally yeah, gives him no. the bullhorn too and he's like is there any chance <laughs> that these characters talk in private yeah. <laughs> <laughs> creepy costume <laughs> dude as well it's, it's a very similar situation to i fell in love with my wife's sister yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just there's a lot of uh, there was a lot of good bits in there. Yeah, I felt good like. onset chemistry. All uh, the the Taylor Swift bit was good, where he's bumping Taylor oh, Swift yeah. in the car, and then she taps on the window. Um, just a lot of like quippy humor like that that I wasn't expecting at all, and I think that's what made it so effective. It's just nice to see two people with very with a, a whole lot of old Hollywood charisma just bounce off each other and, yeah. and play yeah. off each other. And you get to see like when movie stars were movie stars and like why that used to be a thing and like why you would go and see people be utterly charming in a movie together. Um, yeah. You don't see that as much anymore. No. Besides like Dune 2. Which Jeez. I thought got a great little... Uh, oh yeah, the... the <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> It's high noon. Uh, metal, at the, metal storm. <laughs> yeah. It's high noon at the edge of the universe. What a good line. I hate that it was Jason Momoa it's at the so end. It's so funny. I, that fucking it's Jason Momoa. Yeah, right. I don't know Jason why I only Momoa. like him in certain things, and I fucking just hate the scream. The scream the makes choo! me it makes me so fucking mad. <laughs> Is it because it, it's the Maui scream from no, I think it's, Moana? Uh, no, because I like Moana. I think it's because he's, he does it in everything, he so does. it automatically ties all your characters together. It automatically takes universe. me out of the everything. The Momoa-verse. I know. I'm like, I'm like, stop. Why do directors keep letting him do that? He's the same person in every fucking movie. For sure. And, and now that you say that, too, yeah, I was surprised it happened to be Jason Momoa as well but then ultimately i was like he plays himself all the time like he's almost the new rock he's like a samoan <laughs> rock to me yeah. which he's, was gonna yeah, which was gonna encompass it too when nathaniel was doing um the big guy team <laughs> I'm of, like the next <laughs> action movie, whatever it is we we missed one of not uh of not adding jace momoan well, see, I think we need. Oh, I mentioned them. Yeah, I, really? that's what I said. He, oh, man. I mentioned them. I, I said, them. Yeah, yeah. I said, I don't think no, his good, neck is his neck is thick enough. I I want like a, okay. I want like a, a for, true Samoan. Can we give context really quick <laughs> for the group chat that no one else is in but the four of us? <laughs> All right, so and listeners, if you're out there, there's a group chat with with the boys, obviously, where we talk about the show a lot. But also, I brought up that post this movie, I want to make an action franchise called the I think the Ministry of Big Fellas. Is is the name we're going with right <laughs> yeah, now? Yeah, that's what. You're but it's it's gonna be like an action franchise. But the dudes are just they're just big dudes. Everyone's big. Yeah, mountain, we got. Rock. Yeah, we got. You get the mountain from Game of Thrones. We're gonna get Winston Duke. We're gonna get uh, who was it? The my guy from from Train to Busan. 
the dong. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't think of his name either. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, shows sure. up he shows up in the best clips of just punching dudes out. If you've <laughs> yeah. never seen him in his uh, his foreign language films, he's Mark, the best. Mark Ruffalo CGI is the Hulk. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm talking uh, it, John Cena, Dave Bautista, uh Alan Richson, just just big beefy boys. And they're and mm-hmm. that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna it's go the around new expendables. Yeah. But they no one's gonna get hurt. They're, they're just going to walk around just wrecking shop. Be tough. That's yeah. going to be it. But yeah. we voided The Rock. We exiled no him. Rock. We will not, no we Rock. We will not allow him. You know what? I, I will say. I will not allow him in this film. I think The Rock for me is above Jason Momoa from an acting standpoint. Oh, man. Just because so? I've seen The Rock in some really serious things. Like, I think The Rock thoroughly enjoys acting in, like, the TV show Ballers. Mm. I think. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I think do that. that The yeah. Rock takes himself very seriously in like the movie Pain and Gain. Like he's, yeah. I like he. I think he's doing a really good job yeah. in some of those movies. I wish he would do that more. And yeah, I think he's. I think he's taking himself a lot more seriously than just Jason Momoa just being like, I'm just gonna be me in every movie. Yeah. So. Anyway, I'll, yeah, I'll give lot, you that. A lot of talk for a small cameo in this but as yeah, well. Too. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, Would it be more funny or less funny if it was John Cena at the end? More funny. More. More funny. Especially because he was also in Barbie. He probably could have sold it a little better, yeah. True. Yeah. More. I, I think that would have been hilarious if it was John Cena. But the Momoa was still good. I still enjoy it. It was a good I like reveal. Jason Momoa. Yeah. And then the, the Dune Lady soundtrack was also fucking a, a, hilarious. Yeah, the good. Dune Scream. Uh, jab, it was hilarious. Was a good, or, yeah. I don't so know if it's a jab, good. but like little like reference. Yeah, that the, was hilarious. The guitar design was a fun yeah, little bit. Acts, yeah, and then by the time she's done, she's like, this thing kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's growing on me. Uh, how, how about the one at the start where he goes up the up the escalator or up the elevator? Oh, that he, was really impressive. And then he so hangs good. out in front over the thing and then you follow him down as he does, yeah. the, does the drop. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really li- I liked that whole setup as well too, and that kind of like intro. Um, oh, him crying in the fucking truck. Yeah, that's Dude, what he yeah, was saying okay, to Taylor okay, Swift. Okay, yeah, 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 that's, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's my favorite scene. <laughs> Dude, it's so yeah. good. That's my favorite scene. And then at the end of the scene, even though she gets out of the truck, it, the very short car drop off was very yeah. funny too. Yeah. <laughs> you um, drive me to my car. <laughs> and then he, you yeah. hear it back on blaring <laughs> as he's pulling away. I'm yeah. like, it's fucking great. It's a great bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you all think this film was any different if this is Ryan Reynolds opposed? I think it is very different. I think yeah. I think we've seen. I too think Ryan much. Gosling makes it, man. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of Reynolds, and we've seen him so much in the anticipation Comedy of lead. Deadpool. Yeah, that I think I'm so hard stuck that it would have taken me out of Deadpool. The movie, this movie, if is already kind of taking me. Mm. I'm like, what do you, I don't. I'm okay with you doing this, but I don't want you to do this because I just want mm-hmm. I just want to reserve you and everything about you for Deadpool. But I um, I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he could se- if he yeah. could sell the the emotional beats. Yeah, the romance as, part. Yeah, I don't, I don't as, buy it from him that right as now. Honestly, good, yeah. as Gosling can, I think. Is Gosling married? Yeah, to Ava Mendes. Yes. Oh yeah, Ava that's Mendes. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. They oh, I didn't kids. know that. Yep. Two or three kids. Huh. Yeah, he said, uh, Gosling had a quote that kind of went around that he said he's done taking any roles that are too taxing on his mental health or like put him in a bad mental place. And, and his, all of his decisions, all of his roles are based now on his family. And he makes all of his casting decisions with his wife um, just because he just feels like his his family life is much better that way. He doesn't want to cool. put himself in like a bad place mentally. Sure. H- have you guys seen The Nice Guys? I know that's yeah. one that film Twitter talks about all the time. Mm-hmm. You saw it too, Adam? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, never mind then. I'm thinking of the other guys. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. We need to get that on pod at some yeah. point too. So yeah. ultimately what Adam's saying, what I'm hearing at least, is that we are fortunate that Blade Runner 2049 came out in 2007. Correct. Yeah. Because Correct. Because he, he probably okay. wouldn't, if offered that same role today, he probably wouldn't take yeah. it. He, it's oh, going to be roles like Ken and like Colt Seavers from now on, which yeah. like I'm I'm Blade all for. Like, for. like we've yeah. gotten enough of like emo Ryan yeah. Gosling where like he's, he's proved his chops <laughs> oh, as a serious sure. actor, whatever you want to say. Until... And like... Tells kids are older, and then like he gets to do the mid '60s villain turn or something. True. Well, mm-hmm. then he turns into Harrison Ford, and then, then that's or, cool uh, too. Patrick Stewart in Green Room. True. Sure. Oh, the movie's awesome. <laughs> that movie is great. Uh, 
Yeah, also, I, I, I love Adam, Ryan Gosling. Or not Adam, you're Adam. Ryan Ryan Reynolds had his shot, like it with like kind of like a family fun movie. Not his shot. He did it really well. I actually thoroughly enjoyed the Adam Project, oh. and that was kind of his thing lately. That was like, yeah, you know, within the last couple of years. Of, well, now he's doing If. Right. Yeah. But I don't. I, the, I still can't get a grasp on that movie. I don't know if that's supposed to be like adult funny or kid funny. It's, I, it's very, kid funny. I think. I just maybe it's because Ryan. I just don't trust yeah, him. I you know, see. I'm like, you're gonna do something. <laughs> you, you 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 expect the Deadpool pull? Yeah, back want this humor. to be? Yeah, yeah. kind of want it to be rated R. <laughs> what's the um? What's the Ryan Reynolds film I'm thinking of? I want to say it was either last summer, or 2022 summer. Um, there's a there's an Avengers cameo in it. Or cameo in it. Uh, you cut out a little bit. I couldn't quite hear what you said. You said it was... What's uh, What's the Ryan Reynolds film I'm thinking of? It's a summer joint. It's either 2023 or 2022. There's a cameo in it because it takes place in like a video Barbie? game space. No. Oh, it was Free that's, Guy. Oh, that's really Free Guy. Free, free Guy. That. That's what it is. That's what it is. I hated that's, that movie. That's immediately what kind of put me into this realm when I was seeing this, but sure. it was a totally different movie. But yeah. that's like the first thing I thought of. Free guy. I could see, how, I could see how you could you would say that for sure. Yeah. Anyways, we're not even talking about the movie anymore, but we all enjoyed it. Yeah, man. I, yeah, sure I think did. Tyler hit it on the not head. Not one of those to like analyze super movie. deep. It's just kind of yeah. a fun one to talk about it, scenes here and there. Any favorite set pieces, bits, or anything beyond uh, the Taylor Swift one that we talked about? Of course, uh, I loved the the random like. Kill Bill samurai sword fight with the girlfriend, like just out of nowhere, and like no sure. explanation for it either why she attacked him or like why she was there alone or you know any of that. Just just attacks him, <laughs> or I guess thinking about it now, was she trying to kill him for the? I thought the whole thing was they were, they were trying to frame him, so she couldn't have been trying to kill him to frame him, would they? I don't know. I don't know either. Because I, I was like, they never really explained why she attacked him. No, yeah, yeah. or like what team she's on. She might like we don't she's know. Right, she's solo. And like, just, if, yeah. is she in on the plot? A nut I, don't, job. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, nobody explains. I that. don't know how clearly, that lines up. I'd have to like watch Aaron's the movie. character isn't very worried about her. Like he could give two shits. So right, it's not like right. he can't get another girl in this universe. So Tom Ryder. <laughs> Damn, he's good. See, like what? <laughs> uh. Ben Stiller's character name in oh, <laughs> uh, in Tropic Thunder, yeah. yeah what was it? I don't know, Tug or something. Because <laughs> I just remember, <laughs> yeah. I just remember saying Tug rump, Speedman, rump, yeah, <laughs> Tug Speedman, Rump Tum Tugger Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no Tivo, <laughs> Scorcher Five. <laughs> All right. All right. We good? Ready yeah, make? action set pieces. I liked. I, I was gonna say though the. I wish the one where they're in the spinning dumpster looked better, because apparently they did that Agreed. for real. We saw that mm. in the like the closing credits, yeah. but like there's a lot of CG going on around it, and it just doesn't look as yeah. good. Yeah, um, I agree. But there was other really cool stunts as well too, and I liked, I really liked the last of the Mohicans um, Hilarious. <laughs> scene, and when he had to is this rubber? Ex- <laughs> it's when he had to explain it to Emily Blunt, and he was like, <laughs> Dan's last limo, he can plan it didn't work. And it was going pretty well, but I got blanks only. <laughs> and like, he, you as the audience know exactly what he's saying, but you're also on board with her where yeah, she just like, is like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this concludes us just telling you jokes of the movie itself, uh, but I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I hope you yeah. enjoyed our quotes. It's okay. I hope you guys agree with what we thought was funny. Hard to review comedies. There's a reason it is, man. Like three yeah. on the entry list. <laughs> For sure. All right. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get out of spoilers. Uh, welcome back, listeners who skipped over the spoilers section of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and throw up the Fall Guy up upon the entry list. If you don't know what that is, it's our big list of all the movies we have reviewed, uh, all ranked on one list compared to one another. Uh, it's essentially how we rate our movies. Rather do it out of five stars, out of ten, whatever it is. We throw up all the movies uh, we review on a list and see how they compare. Uh, if you want to see the entry list for yourself, you can do so by checking the episode description where it is linked to my letterboxed. Uh, let's see. Edit. The Fall Guy. This is entry 186, gentlemen. 186. Uh, onto the entropy list. Um, 
quite a few movies here. Uh, what does this compare to? I guess we could throw it up quick to Deadpool and and Bullet Train, which are relatively high. I know Bullet Train's no. in like the Bullet Train's probably lower than than I originally think, right? Seventy three. Well, yeah, I think it's it's sunk. But seventy three on this list is very yeah. good. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's still very good. Um, and then where's Deadpool? Deadpool yeah, is at sixty six. Which I don't know if that's high. I don't feel like that movie's aged super well, but. Man, Still, I'll yeah. tell you what, well, we've done some good placing because originally when we were talking about where's Deadpool, I remember there was a stage where we had Doctor Strange, Shang-Chi, the Suicide Squad, and Deadpool. They were all, and that was sitting at like 40 something. Yeah, and I think yeah. we've gone out our way to kind of move down, right? So yeah. I thought they're going to be much higher than you originally said, but six not a bad place. Um, yeah. As far as this guy, looking at Deadpool and Bullet Train, I, I don't think I'm putting it above him. Um, Deadpool is, I like Deadpool. Um, Bullet Train has, um, it's tough, has a crush of mine and Zessie Beats in there. Difficult for me, even though she does play pretty much like a plesh doll the entire time and doesn't actually play herself. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, still in it. I'll still take it. Yeah. So, yeah. um, looking here, I mean, it's, it's tough, man. You see District 9, which is a good film, Blade, Predator at 88. I think that's let let drop a little bit um this is tough guys this is tough this is tough guys i'm going i'm going 103 i'll split the menu in last night in soho so i'll split anya taylor joy okay you said 103 Yep, 103. Splitting the menu and last night in Soho. For right, listeners, that's, that's uh, yeah, below X, below the menu, above last night in Soho, Halloween 20, The Strangers. Okay. Try to break up some of that there. horror in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm also in that range. I think I'm gonna land here at 96 above Soul, below Barbarian. Mm. Um, it's just slightly higher than you, but definitely in that range. I feel like yeah. I don't think you can get it too much higher just because of how much or how quickly the quality on the entropy list accelerates. Because yeah, once right. you hit the '90s, you're like, oh, these are actually really good movies, <laughs> like yeah. really, really good movies. Uh, we only we don't like to review bad movies, so we got a lot of good ones on here. But yeah, I'll go uh, ninety. What I say, ninety six. Yep, and ninety six will be mine. I have mine, and I'm going to go slightly higher. Um, I did thoroughly enjoy Barbarian. I think everybody knows how I feel about Malignant. Um, but I think The Descent is a good hard cap. Um, and mm. I'm willing to sacrifice, like, Creed um, Creed 3. You were big on Prey. Prey was killer, dude. I loved Prey. Yeah, so yeah. Pre Prey is pretty hard to get past, but um, I think I like it better than... 94, 95, it's pretty close to Barbarian, but I think this is just so much more um, easily consumed and sure. uh, has a lot more uh, replay value, and so I'm, I'm going to put this uh, above those. So, yeah, I'm going to be at 94. Mm. 94. I will be at 106. Right above Frozen, right below the Strangers. Gotcha. It's a little bit closer to where I had it. So yeah, we're we're all, we're all in the same ballpark though, yeah, give or take. We're definitely, all 10 movies. definitely the best of the movies. genre as well too. Like I also think about just like other kind of romance movies and like you got like Forgetting Sarah Marshall way down there, like one forty seven, and like mm -hmm. I was like, this is definitely way. This is like, I don't know if I'd put this in the same ballpark. Different kind of movies, I guess, but like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's, that's a good spot for it. And that should even us out right around where we want to be, I think. It does even us out to an even, well, not an even 100, uh, 99.75, which puts it at 100 based on the new ranking rules of the entropy list, which puts it below American Gangster and above Prey 2022. 20, I don't know if I need to say that. Is there two right. Preys? Is it three? No, no, two. it's, it's twenty two. Right. Yeah, it is. Oh my 22. god, it's that long ago! Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, no, yeah, we've been doing this show a long time. Was that a late release? 
Was that like a December 22, uh, November? Fall, I maybe? feel like it was fall? fall, early fall, like late September. Okay. Maybe around there. Man. I should rewatch that. I haven't rewatched it, man. Should get back to that. I remember it being solid, just nothing yeah. too crazy for me. But uh, yeah, 100 for Fall Guy. We'll there it that is. There. Um, our next review is going to be Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, uh, yeah. So new Planet of the Apes movie. Go check that out. Um, I haven't watched any of the other three in quite a while, but it is still related, I think, but it's quite a few generations in the future it seems so i don't know how it's going to connect to their movies i'm not planning on going back to rewatch them so hopefully it doesn't connect too much um and mm. then i can just have a good time and uh yeah i don't i haven't heard much about how this one's supposed to be so i'm excited to kind of just go in with the with with kind of no expectations i don't know whether it'll be good or bad i feel like it could be both and then I can just be the judge of my uh, judge of my own. Uh, do we want to do a quick round of what we're watching, or are we going to get out of here? I think uh, with how much we probably talked post pod, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. we got Fair enough. enough. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we can we can move on now. Uh, Nathaniel, any chance there is a five star review? I, I don't know, but uh, no five star reviews. But if you want to give us a five star review, you can do so in app on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and we'll uh, we'll read it out here on the podcast. Yes, we will. Um, yeah, while you're doing that, uh, share the podcast. Share with a friend, a family member, maybe a stuntman, you know. Tyler, you seem to know a lot of them. Share it share with that dude you bounce the TVs for. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyone else that you encounter, of course, in your day-to-day life. Uh, while you're doing that as well, follow us on Twitter at Banter Row, on Instagram at Backrow Banter Pod. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube at Backrow Banter. And then our email is just backrowbanterpod at gmail.com. Uh, I'll kick it on over to Nathaniel. Where can the people find you at, my man? You can find me on uh, Twitter and Letterboxd at NS Gingrich. You can find me on Instagram at NathanielG92. Sam Piper Tapes, that's my other podcast, Tyler. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Letterboxd, and X, formerly known as uh, Mouse Cop. Mouse Cop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all Tyler Vidalis, V I D A L E S. Uh, Blake. Yes, sir. Letterboxd, Blake Holder. I'll be on there logging some things, writing them out of five stars. Uh, PlayStation, Xbox, Mr. Royal Coors. Um, I believe I'm I'm last, so yeah. Well, um, we'll be our B. I mean, I'm also on Twitter at H24 oh, on Letterboxd. Pardon, H- pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can find me there. Um, and I'll kick it back over to Blake. You can still have the outro. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Thanks for supporting. Um, We appreciate it. It goes a long way, so spread the word. Um, And, yeah, we'll see you next week for, what is it, Kingdom Planet of the Apes? Yep. We'll, We'll be RB. All right, gentlemen, let's get into it. <sighs> let's do it. Kendrick murdered Drake. <laughs> it's all over the news. It's 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 insane. There's 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 music things happening. I haven't heard at all. I've been really off social media for sure. Don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. What, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm I'm not. I don't. I didn't like turn on Kendrick Lamar social media notifications in the past few days. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> not Drake's, just Kendrick's. I just man, my my twenty or my nineteen year old self is just living his absolute best life right now. Just I'm living my best life at twenty three with <laughs> just, this shit, man. Just enjoying. It's been a treat. It's been a treat. Um, I mean, I, I was gonna ask who you guys think won, but I think we're all a consensus here. Like, I don't think it's a question. I've, I, I still only have one person that it's up in the air for in my life. Everyone else I hear from seems to agree. Yeah, I mean, I just don't even know. 
uh, time will tell, I guess, like what what really happens here, like if it continues. True, I don't think like, we're on the other side, fully yeah. on the other side yet. That's the thing is, I think there's more to come. Some of the Twitter stuff, some of the Twitter timeline reaction has just been hilarious. Like today, people started putting up more of those like engagement, like. Do you think men and women should have equal rights posts or whatever? And I've just like seen a ton of responses underneath that are just like, Kendrick, please drop. Please get this off my time. <laughs> You're so close <laughs> to escaping these these bullshit engagement questions. I saw a few of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I think we're we're all on the same path. This was a yeah, it was dude, a crazy Drake, weekend for man. sure, right? That's where we're going with this. <laughs> Drizzy right. Drizzy is is your boy. Yeah. Drizzy Drizzy. <laughs> B- BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. That song is <laughs> yeah. That that beat is hilarious. <laughs> All right, but but where? Okay, I want to hear your guys' stories here. Where were you guys? Was it Saturday night or Friday night? It was I think Friday it was Friday night. night. Well, uh, well, where where were where, you guys? Were you guys up for when they dropped? Did you guys hear them in the morning? What happened? No. So I didn't see the drop in real time. I caught it in the morning. I like woke up to like our group chat blown up and then like two other group chats with some other friends so yeah. i wish i would have caught that in real time i'm sure that was crazy yeah oh, which one which are we talking about here too because since we That's since we last family recorded, matters and not like us and meet the grand no, it, was, it was family matters and meet the grams yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we, which and dropped and friday within i don't know they say it's like right. a 30 minutes it was, I, I heard, i've heard between 20 and 40 minutes but that, it was under yeah. an hour meet the grams sure. was like in the like 12 to 24 hours afterwards was some of the like just most insane shit in my life where it was just everyone was like everyone was having a good time and now it's a horror story (laughs) yeah (laughs) right yeah like my whole life it has been there is one there is one king diss track and it's hit him up and it always has been and like yeah and meet the grams i might have taken it like i was just like I don't I don't know how you could get I I, it, I told Tyler I was like it feels like when Saw first came out like it feels like we've just changed the genre here <laughs> where did you catch it in real time Nathaniel or were you asleep at that point no I think I did catch it like or I I I think I didn't see the Drake one because I, I just don't have the Drake thing but then the uh, the Kendrick response was immediately there and then yeah. um yeah yeah, I didn't see Kendrick dropped until about 30 minutes after he did. Okay. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, and I was on Discord with my friend who's also very involved. And I was like, dude, Kendrick just dropped. He's like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And so uh, we both, like, got off for a second to both play it on our own. And then I come back a little bit after him because I went and, like, made some food while, while after I listened to it. Yeah. Uh, and then I come back and he goes, dude. Drake dropped an hour ago, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and then that that was the whole moment of like, "Oh wait, what actually just happened?" Because I just I just thought it was crazy that Kendrick dropped. Then getting the context that he dropped within an hour after Drake, I was like, "Oh my god!" So then I had to go oh, listen good. to Drake's. I was in the same thing. Uh, you had to go listen to Drake's, which was, eh. Uh, Family matters is good. I, Family matters is, it, is like good. It, it, it's good, but I, I heard meet the grams first so i was just right. a little underwhelmed by family matters the first time i listened to it um but then i was just i i, I was it was just like jaw dropping listening to meet the grams i was i like didn't know how to react i legitimately like yeah. you said i felt like i was listening to a horror film like, like i just never thought it would go this direction and last week i remember saying uh, in our like pre pod or post pod uh whatever conversation about this i was like i don't see how like you i think we were talking about how like you can't really end drake's career he's too big yeah 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 of course this is about as close as you can get <laughs> this is genuinely about as close as i think you can get i don't know if his career is done barring more things coming out and he gets arrested or or mm-hmm. or something else but for right now like I, I said last week, like, oh, you know, whenever Drake drops an album, I'm still going to listen to it, even if I'm not the biggest Drake fan. That's sure. changed. I don't plan oh, on wow. listening to his music <laughs> again. Like, I okay. don't know. 
you like you've obviously been like on that side of the i have like genuinely like I, I you know i've i've heard things here and there but like never fully like delved into it but like this kind of just brought it all to light and everything that i've seen pop up on the internet since then has yeah. just been very eye opening both you know just photos videos lyrics of his songs like all this weird weird stuff so, has come up that kind of makes me feel a little icky i've also been having a theory that like we are like culturally primed at this moment for kendrick's lyrics to like be taken over like kendrick's lyrics are the perfect type of lyrics for tiktok to go nuts over and like they've sure. they've been trained mm. to do it on like taylor swift now for like months in that kind of mm -hmm. thing and now you have another huge like cultural thing going on and like when kendrick can be four double entendres deep on you mm -hmm. like that is just fodder for all of that like crazy type of like that those type of videos you know what i'm saying and i'm just right, wondering right. if like it, that's gonna have something to do with it or like will be something that we notice as well too or that kind of thing i but, think like, I, I the internet's playing a huge part in this in terms of just like confirmation bias kind of like the echo oh, chambers of, of like of if course. you're on a kendrick side you're gonna get fed a lot of kendrick stuff. exactly you're drake, exactly you're gonna get fed a lot of drake stuff um so like that that's also been interesting too because I mean, let's be honest. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm taking Kendrick over Drake in this beef, and I'm a Kendrick fan over more than I am ever have ever have been a Drake fan. Um, but like, what Drake accuses Kendrick of in Family Matters is also very serious, and I also do want Kendrick to address it at some point because if it kind of just goes unaddressed, like mm -hmm. that's a problem for me personally. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I can't listen to Drake, but Kendrick, whatever he did, even if he did that stuff is fine. Like, no, obviously not. I can't support that. So, and the, and, and yeah. if it is true, it's even more damning for him in some aspects because he's painted himself as such a, like a upstanding person or, or, you know, I'm not saying he's the nicest guy or like the, you yeah, know, yeah. No, he raps sure. about, you know, he raps about crime, you know, he's, he's yeah, right, yeah. right. But it goes against kind of who he's built his public persona yeah. up as, and it would kind of feel a little like you lied to us the kind of thing uh yeah. if if those allegations did turn out to be true um so i don't know yeah, it's, it's been an interesting few days to, trying to like figure out <laughs> that whole thing yeah it's it's definitely interesting man i mean I, I think to your point in terms of like ending drake's career like I, that's not possible right as we right. kind of already said but i think like what what has just happened like via internet is the closest we can get to that right, right like being able to be memed is like the closest you can get to being like canceled in today's culture it'll never go anywhere it'll never go outside of the internet right, right? but the fact that you can go on the internet and see yourself being memed like over and over again is the closest we'll get in and today's think... time now to people being like hey we no we don't like this guy jokes yeah. forever on, on the internet right which is pretty damning considering Drake w was the person who would have ran the like in this who ran the internet in this beef. But like Kendrick's the person like just post song, never post anything again. And Drake's a very active internet meme, jokey joke type of guy. Um, so yeah, w it was interesting to see the kind of the the sway fold that way, right? Um, and then the other side, I'm I'm kind of torn on too. Where yeah, I mean there was a there were a lot of jabs right between mm -hmm. um, like pedophilia, sexual abuse. Um, domestic violence, all all types of things, um, but it's I'm I'm kind of I don't know I'm kind of from the cloth where I think ultimately I think Pusha T changed the way like we view beef like via the internet age of like having to disclose information about somebody that's true and nobody knew right, right where like before right. it was kind of just like who really cares how like factual it is is like it's it's like it's hip hop like. I saw a funny tweet where somebody was like, it wasn't it wasn't beef related, but it was like West Side Gun has lyrics about like cooking bricks in an air fryer. Does anybody actually think he right, did this? Right. Or is it just like <laughs> what sounds cool, right? <laughs> and then like that's like the part of me is kind of on that side. It's like, is Drake actually a pedophile? I don't know. Right? right. But even if he's not, the fact that it sounds funny and it's memed, who cares? I, right? Yeah, <laughs> like I'm kinda I think that I think I think all those conversations are happening, like at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Right? For like sure. it's reached this point in the culture where it is big enough that like all of those things are happening at once. And mm -hmm. like I think you're a hundred percent right with like where like for I think like the rap heads or anything like Pusha T like ended Drake's credibility for sure with that with like true like rap heads at that point. Like the, it, yeah. he's been dead to that at already. And so for then sure. just to see this get 
brought out as like beyond that is it, it, just is crazy right. it's almost like so chapter the internet two. is crazy yeah yeah like i i never would have thought there'd be a day where you would see like yeah drake was like the jokes of the internet like he's right. always been the internet guy where he was his first diss track um i think when kendrick took what was it like two weeks to reply or whatever it was right. and then drake was kind of just continuously online like different memes like wearing right. different la merch and stuff like that and trolling and then like Kendrick like dropped again, then like all that shit ended. And then it's not like Kendrick is necessarily trolling Drake. It's just the internet just took it and ran with it. Right. I feel like right? it, Which it was, it's, it's crazy to see, man. I never it, would have thought I'd seen that day. It, it truly did feel like Kendrick was kind of like, okay, I'm not going to like, this isn't me versus you. I've play, I've shifted this to the culture versus you. Yeah. And now sure. you're yep. fucked. And like that. Yeah. And, and, and then Drake was still trying to play by the, the old school rules and it just yeah. is not working in any way. Right. Like. Right. Yeah. I don't um, know. That's just been crazy. To echo your point, that's been crazy to see. It, it, yeah, I never would have thought I'd see that. So I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there, there's obviously to Adam's point, right? If you're on Drake's side, you'll get ton fed. You'll get fed a ton of stuff in that algorithm. If you're on the other side, uh, vice versa. But I mean, ultimately, it's it's one of those where it's like, man, I have a hard time thinking thinking drake actually won this beef not that that's indicative of ending either body's career no it's just more so like yeah the the internet trolling is all on drake right, right. and then you look at the actual um volume of consumption of the music right i think like the highest right. streaming and all that is in favor of kendrick too so right. it's like even I if you're just mild. in it for the shits and giggles right it's like how can you not you almost have to give it to that guy because like, if it was vice versa, you would say the same thing. Go like, well, Drake has more streams. Who cares? Before, Which, before we even got on, like Tyler and I were playing. Not uh, they not like us, and like yeah. looking up the lyrics on Rap Genius, and it's at four million views. Or like, <laughs> yeah, 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 just, yep. yeah. yeah. Um, Every one of his drops has over a million, if like not over two or yeah. three or and then four just, on YouTube, like all that stuff. To it's, have it's insane. to have the heart part six come out and just like fall on its face as well yeah, too, it's like, tough. It's where tough. everyone just decided as well, like nah, like I because I even text you guys where I was like. Guys, I'm really in Kendrick's camp here. This just doesn't, but this doesn't seem good in comparison. And then it does feel like the rest of the internet has also just been like, yep, it's just, yeah. it's not happening. The internet will, um, time and time again, it, it, like the internet, it's not a real place, right? When, when people say that, because like right. you go outside in the real world, it doesn't exist. But the internet is very indicative of like how people like view in like in view in current times. And I think he won the internet, man. And like Drake is just, he's just like trolled left and right, which is it's crazy just, between like the Metro BBL Drizzy beats, which yeah. is pure comedy, right? The songs, it's just, yeah. it's just comedy. But that's how you win the the internet memes right. and everything behind it, you know? It's like, it's, and it's, it's just, tough, man. it's just so crazy that it was Kendrick too. Like that it just ended up yeah, being yeah. Kendrick. Yeah. Who of just, all people, the yeah, most non internet yeah. person is mind blowing to me. Yeah, well, and again, it, it was just that thing of, like, it, it, even when we were first talking about it, it was just like, yeah, Kendrick's not going to do it. He's, like, up kind of above all this and that kind of thing. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, no, he's decided. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, going back to that that Civil War episode, it's funny because I listened to that, too, after you brought it up. And, yeah, I, I think I think a lot of people, or I'll, I'll speak, only speak for us, I think we severely – underestimated like how much kendrick actually does not like drake right and like not even like drake is like the idea that something like that can exist in a hip-hop space so just Dude, listening back to some like older reply. kendrick songs like i sent free spirit yeah. this morning like i yeah. wonder how much is there that like anytime he's talking about another rapper it feels like it could be pointed at drake well, this, almost yeah, every single time this is where i was talking like the tiktok like the taylor's like people like they've all been primed to do that like i feel like that's going to be the next stage of this as they all go deep mm -hmm. onto like the kendrick discography and look and try right. and figure out how right. long this has going been going which, on and stuff which would be interesting too because i mean obviously dot kendrick right which whichever you want to call him he is a massive artist, right? Like right. him, Drake, and J. Cole, and like Travis Scott are probably the most successful hip hop artists we have. Yeah. But it would be interesting to see where that goes with your theory on like people like deep diving in on TikTok and whatnot now. Like, does this then put him into the next level 
of right. artistry, which is the Drake level, right? Right, uh, which is the Drake level, which is the Taylor Swift level. Which you just who would have thought that a rapper of like conscious rapping, very pro black, very things of that nature would actually transcend to become that level of star is, is crazy, right? Which is like where I think even like I already saw like Mr. Morale is like back in the like. Of course it is, yeah, all like, those things pop up. Well, and it's yeah. just like, but that's crazy that, like, that album, which is so, like, will not, there's no song on there that could get radio play. Like, it is not a radio album, all, yeah. but it yeah. is, like, being forced back up there because of the beef as well, too. Like, to your point, like, I do wonder if there will be kind of, like, a reimagining or a re A new wave of, of Kendrick fan. Yeah, of where, of where yeah. Kendrick's going to be on that. Yeah, because it, it makes you wonder, like, the demographics of his fan base like i can't imagine there's a lot of kendrick fans under the age of like 18 right oh, just right. off how much right. music he releases where and I mean, obviously like, he released two years ago but then content leveled and prior to that the last time he re released music they would have been like 12 right yeah. <laughs> you know so it's just, it's just totally and music, different and yeah, music just right. sounds completely different from that yeah. too like yeah. you're definitely right so yeah may, maybe if if that happens that'll that'll be interesting um, do you all ultimately think he responds again? I don't. I don't think so. I feel crazy. I don't saying think that he. I, I don't know. Wrong last I time. know. I don't know that he has to. Like I guess I like like it's really going to depend on on yeah. how how uh, how not, much he hates him. Well, I was going <laughs> to say how not like us. Like if that just does become like that for me, like feels like it's poised to be song of the summer right now. Like we were driving, Which is we crazy. We went and got food, yeah. and we were someone was literally playing it in the drive through. Oh no! Us. Yeah, 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 it's one of those yeah. songs. Yeah. yeah, it was literally yeah. like one of those things where I, he pointed it out, and then I listened it and then heard it, and I was like, "This thing's just so much bigger than what we even think." And we already think yeah. it is big. Like the fact that it's gone to the point where it's like viral to where you can hear other people blatantly yeah. listening to it and doing whatever they're doing for the day like it's it's already it's already too far yeah and it's it's funny too with that because it's almost like kendrick like made the unthinkable like the unfathomable song where like it's the it's the diss track that has replay value right <laughs> that has like the content behind which is obviously the other three songs don't have any of that to the masses right, right. it has replay value if you like kendrick music but so it's crazy that he was able to actually, of this entire beef, not only put out the most music by a landslide, but then and win the beef, and then ultimately create the song that's like the most poppy radio play song right. you can find. And it happens to be about him being a pedophile is fucking comedy, even if it's not true. Like I said, which who knows? Which um, I don't, yeah. We were talking about this earlier, and like somebody has to be having that conversation before he puts this on track. Like, as in like K-Dot has the, to, like, get a lawyer, past lawyers yeah, first. Yeah, dude, like, the defamation charges that he could press yeah, against him. Yeah, defamation character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some, like, serious no legal repercussions know, right? if <laughs> something like that isn't true. Well, that's what I've seen, too, is, like, for Kendrick to allege everything he's alleged in these songs could lead him to very serious legal trouble. And so, like, if he ran this by lawyers and showed him what evidence he has, he must feel pretty confident he can back up all of these claims. Either that or he's getting around it by some kind of loophole of, like, not saying Drake's name specifically. Right. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. I guess you right. could play it right. out that way, too. I just thought of that. Well, and I think, I think too, that, like, even in Not Like in not like Us, I keep saying, what is, is it They Not Like Us or is it Not Like Us? Not Like Us. Not Like, not us. like, not like us. us. Okay, got it. Um, in Not Like Us, like, I think he's also very specifically talking about the people around Drake as well too yeah, and I yeah did, for sure it's I, that whole embodiment of, yeah of like a drake persona yeah and in like a, the ovo place. team and like all that yeah. kind of stuff and the the and i also said to tyler too i think it's like one of those things where it's like could be loophole where like the age of consent is actually different in different countries as well too and like but yeah it's just the it's that same idea it's like you said it's that kind of like kendrick has taken a thing which is completely, which is crazy, and that the rest <laughs> yeah. of the culture is just is just like we never talk about, or just like don't really address, or is just like is serious to think about, and then it's just been like, yeah, that's that dude, and guess what? I'm gonna make the catchiest song of all time yeah. off of it. Yeah. And that's just mind 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 bottling it's to wild. me. Yeah. The other For the sure, other man. indicator that this thing is just so much bigger is like we're a movie podcast. And, yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> and, you know, like obviously we're all fans of 
you know, uh, music in general and, and hip hop is probably the mainstay of most of our stuff, or at least at some point in our life has been. Sure. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's insane. Oh, there was one thing I was going to ask too, is, um, I, I don't know, I, like D- DJ Mustard, where, where does yeah. he come in on all of this? Cause that so beats amazing. D- yeah, so DJ, so my takeaway from that is so DJ Mustard is a, is a well known producer. Yeah, um, but he's from the West Coast. I, I don't know if he's from the Bay, maybe from LA. Definitely from California, right? And he kind of like embodies the California sound. Yeah, where he uses a lot of like uh, he works with like YG a lot, um, G Easy, a lot of very California based artists Got it. and musicians. Um, and I want to say he opted to pick. DJ Mustard for that beat because right. I think Drake kind of went on and mentioned like, oh, well, like I get more play in your city and I'm the bigger artist and X, Y, Z. So then he's like, okay, then I'm just going to make a West Coast anthem because that song is a very West Coast song. 100%. Yeah. Like, there's no way that song would be a massive track if it wasn't because it was a diss record to Drake. Right. It would just be like, oh, this is really cool in California and people love it, but I don't think it would be played in New York City. Right, right, right. right. Um, it just sonically sounds different. So yeah, that's that's uh that's the big thing on there um and then outside of that on the other diss tracks like he was able to get the alchemist on meet right. the grams which most people say alchemist is probably within like top three hip-hop producers i know of all time. you were you were saying um, that like it was crazy yeah. that he managed to have him get his track for that like yeah yeah and he's he's already done a lot of tracks with alchemist um but i, I from what i was kind of reading on that is that that's a beat that he's been sitting on for a long time and he right. just opted to use it for the right. for this right because yeah, it's terrifying um, <laughs> yeah right 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 uh where the dj mustard beat i would imagine he was just like hey man like i yeah, need a is. fucking banger beat you know what i mean and he just gave it to him so well, yeah and that's that what, was that was funny that's the other thing we're not even talking about too is i i've been going back to the 616 in la as well too on youtube because it's not available for streaming and like yeah. that's a fun that's got a really fun like beat outro like intro yeah. on it as well too is that on it's on instagram right I don't yeah, know, I just been finding it on YouTube, Instagram. but yeah. yeah. I wish it was on Spotify because I'd be listening to it more. I've, I've only gone back to the other three more just because that one's not. It was on title for a while. Easily long time. Did, it, did they take it off? 616? Yeah, in LA? I haven't seen it on anywhere but Instagram. I yeah, forgot no, you're a title. I forgot you're a title user. Yeah, I don't see it here either. Um, but yeah. But yeah, man, it was. Crazy yeah. weekend in hip hop. Uh, yeah, never thought we'd see that happen to Drake. I think he'll put out an album whenever it is and still go number and still bring tons of streaming records. That's one hundred percent inevitable. Uh, I, if Drake were to let go of an album this year or whenever his next album is, he releases a ton of music. I would imagine it's soon, right? And if that does not go number one, that would be the most shocking thing of this entire. Thing. I I I think his career has by far not over, but I think it's a, taken a hit he will not recover from. Just just whether so you these think his next album he doesn't go not, number one he he could still i'm not i'm not saying that's out of the realm of possibilities i'm just yeah. saying in terms of like association like there are going to be people and brands and 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 whatever that are just not going to want to associate with drake anymore because people whether it's true or not have associated him as a pedophile of some sort like it, regardless like too many people have been talking about and digging up yeah. dirt on on drake's you know character the past week for people to just automatically be like oh yeah i like drake like people i have short memories but i think the implicit like subconscious association Mm -hmm. of drake as a pedophile is going to sink in pretty deep with at least some people and like yes he could still go number one but i think it's gonna be a little bit everything around drake is going to be a little bit different going forward i don't think he ever goes back to what he was before this beef like he'd be, there's been irreparable damage done to his career and his really? persona i think yeah. so i don't think it'll ever go back to exactly how it is again he'll still make money and sell records and all that mm-hmm. but i i think he's he's not going to be looked at as the same person ever again i just don't think you can come back from it and that's what i mean by this is as close as you can get to ending somebody's career yeah he 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 took a big swing and he he kendrick took a big swing and 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 you know hit pretty hard with this one i'm not gonna lie yeah, yeah it's I just, Daniels. go ahead go ahead Ty. i was just gonna say I, <clears throat> going along the lines of the fans i just i don't think the hard thing is is kendrick's gained a lot of new fandom and and a lot yeah. of them are from 
from people that were like Drake is the best. Yeah. And so not only has he captured a part of his fans, Kendrick's gaining just overall brand new fans that maybe weren't even a fan of Kendrick or, you know, they thought somebody else like J Cole or 21, like somebody was better than all of them. And, and I don't think Drake's going to be gaining any new fans after this. I think the the Mm. people that are going to still push for Drake, listen Uh, to Drake are going to be the the hardcore Drake heads. I, I just His don't growth is stagnated. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Like I think right. I think he's hard stuck and he's going to take a hit for sure. Um but yeah, I don't I don't think he's going to grow anymore after this. He might plateau and and still be relevant, but I don't I don't sure. think he's fucking it's toxic now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's yeah, that that's a good point. I didn't think of him saying he I didn't think of you think of him uh have reaching his peak right in the hip hop space. Uh, I'm more so interested in to see when he does release his next project. Uh, whenever that may be, to see like who are the people associated with that on and it. featured on that. Sure. Right. And I think it's going to be like it, it's going to be your it's going to be your Travis Scotts. It's going to be the people who just want pure numbers, sure. right? Sure. Opposed to I think he's lost his chance at like making further music with like a uh, I don't know for example like a Jay Z or something like that. Like I think those days are long behind him in terms of being able to get. Uh, true hip hop heads, right? Feature. Right. I think that stuff's probably probably gone, done for him. So. Yeah. Nathaniel made a pretty good point earlier, and uh, it was basically that uh, Drake Drake is like a a performer. You know he he wants to be famous. He loves being in oh, the yeah. spotlight. Um, whereas Drake or uh, Kendrick is Kendrick's an artist. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, Drake's like, watch me, watch me drop this song. And, and Kendrick is like, watch me, watch me make this art and fuck you up at the same time. And I think you're going to see like, Kendrick's one of the people that wants to change the game, not just make it bigger. And I think this is where you see like the evolution of like people that do enjoy hip hop start to look at it again, more of an art form instead of just a performance piece where you know who's the biggest and it's gonna you're gonna i think you're gonna see a change in just overall fans uh thought process as well <laughs> yeah that'll that'll be crazy man if that happens to drake that's that's the nuke that nobody ever ever would have thought of happened yeah. um and like i said it, it's even more crazy when you think that it it came from kendrick but i mean it's the more I think about it aloud, it it almost makes sense. Where like this, this was like the perfect storm of like Drake messing right. with like the wrong artist or Kendrick obviously initiating it, right? right? But then the fact that he is such a low key, non on the scene, out the way type of guy, and steadily re- releasing music back right. to back to back makes that much more people even further inclined to listen, right? Because like this was. Thanks. This is the most music I've ever seen Kendrick release in a span of a week in my entire life. That's it probably a, is in terms of outside of like an album. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. It was like, it was crazy. Um, and I think that I, I just like, it's weird that played to his role of like not being a social media figure and letting social media run the jokes opposed to him that like almost played his role, which I don't know if that was a plan of his. I don't know if that was his Trump card, but the fact that that actually came to came to its head is, is really interesting very indicative of like the internet you know what I, I think mean? it was a huge mistake for, like it just that that made no sense his his diss track that he the second one which we haven't really talked about much the heart part six is both a bad song and just like very says some very questionable things i'm not gonna lie uh, brother i didn't even play it yeah, oh it's bad i'll it's, have to hear it i'll have to hear somebody bad. play in front yeah of me, you know? it's it's bad um and he says like i'm too famous to be a pedophile yeah, I got the gist of kind of yeah. some of the stuff, which is a it, crazy stance to take. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> like, you it, know it what is. I mean? And I'm but sure I you guys mean, have I, seen I the guess. Millie Bobby Brown memes, but like no one brought yeah. him. Yeah, no one brought it's her up, but he used that as an example. And then he kind of just doubles down on the same allegations he made in Family Matters. So it's just like it was a yeah. very odd beat. And then also he he's got like a minute outro where he's just like kind of like talking, and it's kind of awkward and weird and cringy. It's bad. Yeah. It's it's a, just a bad song. Yeah. Family Matters is okay. Yeah, it's not cool. bad. Uh, cool. But the hard part six is just like a bad song. So weak. Yeah. I think okay. him taking the stance of like, hey, like we actually planted like we pl- we planted a mole in our camp, right, to feed you fake information. I think that's 
complete that's, bullshit. I think. That's I bullshit mean, too. yeah, that's that seems tough to be like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna plant a mole. Let's tell them we're potentially a pedophile, and like it, it seems a little like you know what I mean. And I have a daughter, even though I've already been accused of like not fathering my first child. Those just seem things that I don't. You know what I mean? I don't know. What do I know? I'm not famous. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything like that going on. But uh, yeah, it, it was interesting, and I, I think I would have to be more inclined to believe Kendrick on that because going back from the Pusha T thing, uh, if you were there in real time, where that was kind of his whole spiel of like how he got that information, but he was like he just doesn't have the best people around him, right? Where like he's like people were kind of just feeding information to me. Sure, you had to seek it out a little bit, um, but. I think that's just kind of indicative of, of the people he has around him, right? Of, of there are some people who certainly don't have his best interests, which Pusha T echoed, which seems like which Kendrick echoed as well in some of those songs. Um, and then Drake tried to do the same thing in both battles between Pusha T and Kendrick, where Pusha T was kind of speaking on the platform too, saying like, yeah, Ken, or Drake kind of went out, was calling around trying to get dirt and get some skeletons in the closet. But like, ultimately there was like nothing really there. And it seems like he did the same thing for Kendrick. So yeah, I, I don't really think they planted fake information. That seems crazy. I don't, I don't think he's nine steps ahead because then right. like the way the song's released doesn't really make sense. And yeah, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I think he's... And I feel like if it was true, it would have been like... <laughs> oh. It would have been a better song. <laughs> like, right. you know? I yeah, don't know. Right. It's just your delivery wasn't there. Just, it just didn't feel... Yeah. It didn't feel like you even... I don't know. Yeah. It, feel, I, it sure. feels like somebody else wrote it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and, th and then ultimately the other side of it is like, and if you did have a mole plant a fake mole and give feed and feed incorrect information, then like you basically just like dug your grave because now if you're not a pedophile, everyone thinks you are, right. so nobody cares anymore, yeah. right? and they just made a really funny song about it. So you know, what I mean, it's just yeah, right. I really don't think there's a win-win out of that, and yeah, it's it's tough. No, it, yeah, like you but, chose uh, the wrong thing. Yeah, maybe not. But, maybe yeah. maybe not the best angle to take. Yeah. yeah. And as, as we said earlier, though, yeah, the, the fact that we think that this may become Song of the Summer is just any sort of pedophilia, this run for your life, 69 guy, <laughs> he's a freak. Being a Song of the Summer is, that's like peak internet culture. And it's so <laughs> funny that that is actually that big of a song. It's crazy. It's hilarious. Yeah. If you were a woman and you think that you're in love, just make sure you hide your little <laughs> yeah. sister from him. <laughs> like, yeah. So much, yeah, man. That was that was funny. The, that was funny. the line that you know, the A minor line is gonna be in clubs, like oh, as, oh a, as a God, DJ dude. drop for yeah. <laughs> months. <laughs> yeah, he he made a a club radio song of the summer song between like the A minor being very quotable between the let me hear you say O V Ho. That's yeah. like the perfect I, party I club song. Line. You know, that's right. my favorite the fact part of he, it all. He 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 dove into it is so interesting where he's almost like you know what fuck it if you don't want to hear me actually have quadruple entendres and be very lyrical like fuck it we're gonna make a pop song or we're, we're gonna, gonna make, something make, for we're make a pop hip-hop song yeah you're, you're gonna find something you enjoy yeah. in these four diss tracks like there's something for everyone yeah so yeah man kung fu kenny man that was that was funny i i think it, it's ultimately the end of it though I'd be shocked if Kendrick I'm, replies again. I'm not. I'm not going to be shocked if he replies, man. I, so, I, do you it, mean reply as yeah. in like full diss tracks or in like just subliminal jabs throughout the rest of his career? Like, I think that's. No, what I'm talking like happen. I'm. I like this. This rap battle. I don't. I think Kendrick will release again in relation oh to gosh. this rap battle sometime, and, and he might wait a little bit. I don't think yeah. he waits too long. Like, I think he release could release within the week. Like, I don't. I don't know. I can go both ways. I wouldn't be shocked if it's over, but. He, the, the fact that he teased the the whole 10 stocks in the song and i was like <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, and, yeah. And like and then at the beginning he goes i see dead people which like could be alluding to an, the next track and in, in like some way i've i've heard theories that he's gonna he's got evidence that could prove drake got xxx tentacion uh killed which like i don't know if i fully believe that but <laughs> I don't yeah, know. yeah i don't know i think he could respond again but it might be over. Who who knows? Yeah, like I said, man. Um, I, I mentioned earlier. I saw the a, a funny snip on the red, and they're like, man, like Westside Gun talks about cooking bricks in an air fryer. Like, there's no way he did that, but it's funny, so who cares? And I think that's most yeah. of hip hop. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. People lie all the time, man. If it sounds catchy, what's uh, what are they saying? Um, 
what is that? Uh, it's like no one knows what is mean, but it's provocative. <laughs> like that's 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 the epitome of hip hop. You know what I mean? So who cares? Gets the people going. So yeah, yeah, man, crazy beef, crazy. <laughs> Been a crazy week. So should we record a movie podcast? Yeah, right. <laughs> you guys want to... Something like nah. that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I We're can talk good. about this for another hour. Let's We're go into here. the tracks one by one. <laughs> <laughs>